podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to the next episode of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors, with the wonderful Mr. Bob Cook and myself, Jackie Jones, and episode 179. Gosh. I know. We're heading up towards 200. We're getting there. Yeah, that'd be remarkable. And the title of this is, Has COVID Changed the Face of Psychotherapy? Well. The plain, simple, direct answer is yes. Yeah, <laughs> I agree, hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, the change has been revolutionary. Whether you agree with it or not, it's been revolutionary, and in many different ways. Yes. So I'll start off with one way, talking about one change, uh, and then there's so many. Well, let's look about what I see. Um, Zoom has. Sorry, um, COVID has brought about the acceleration of online de- online devices such as Zoom and yep. Teams for therapy. Yeah, it's uh, I I'm not done the research on it, so I I don't know in terms of percentage terms, but I know it's very high the shift over and. Uh, it's been, I'm not saying it's been maintained that huge shift in COVID times, but I do know that um, many people still uh, use Zoom for therapy. Um, yeah. I had somebody in today who was talking about exactly that. She went on Zoom for therapy for the first time in COVID and she kept on it till very recently. Uh, when she thought she'd like to have face to face with the trauma work that she was doing, uh, so yes, I think that's the biggest revolutionary change. Me too. I never, ever, ever, ever thought I would do online therapy with anybody. Mm. I was purely face to face because I think you get a different vibe in the room. Mm. You can, you know, feel the emotion in the room and everything. And I wasn't sure how I would pick that up over a Zoom call. Mm. but if I wanted to carry on working during COVID, it was a necessity. <laughs> so mm. I did a course, um, did some CPD hours on, you know, the differences with online stuff and things you need to be aware of. And I still do it now. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not working at the moment, but when I am, because it's widened the field for clients. I was seeing clients in Germany. I was seeing clients down in London. You know, whereas when it's face to face, you've only got your local people that come to you, really. Hmm. So it's widened the accessibility for you, Jackie. Absolutely. And it's something that I never thought I would do. So it's given me a different perspective on on different therapies. Yeah. And I've been surprised in the number of people who have kept on with that medium. Yeah. You know, they've kept on with the online device, whatever it is, as I said. Um, and I was surprised at that. And it's become a norm in a way because <clears throat> in the placement arena where we place people for, um, it's like voluntary work, um, with clients, the standard question is now, have you done some Zoom training in case you need to do some of the psychotherapy due to accessibility again yeah yeah because i suppose it does allow us accessibility <clears throat> for people that might not be able to get out and yeah. do therapy you know if they're suffering from agoraphobia or you know really heightened anxiety to, to do a few on zoom so that they get to know you and they can see the place that they come and everything it, it's got its uses yeah so i think covid has accelerated that in yeah. a way that no other process would have done no no because we were all in the same situation weren't we it wasn't even just like a certain area that was going through it the whole of the world was going through it so 
you know, that caused a problem really with, you know, accessibility and being able to access counsellors because there was an awful lot of people that felt like they needed to see somebody. Yeah, and COVID brought about bringing psychotherapy to our living room. Yeah, yeah. Or bedroom. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And I think that was one of the, the big issues with me around safety and um you know, confidentiality, because you only can see what's in front of the screen. You've no idea whether there's people outside of it that can hear the conversation that's going on. I train for, as you know, for a very long time. Sorry, I practice for a very long time uh, and train people for quite a long time on um, to be group psychotherapists. And I was a group psychotherapist myself. And um, I'm going to do some group training for some people in France. And the person who hired me said, would you look at this article that I've written in COVID times, that's 2021, uh, talking about the, um, I can't remember the title, but basically uh, using regression, psycho, you know, regression, yeah. into the child ego states or the younger self uh, on online devices such as Zoom or Teams. And the appropriateness of that, and I, I read it, and I, uh, and I, I had a lot to say about it. By the way, I can I got... understand, yeah. And before COVID, I don't think such an article would have been written. Yeah, it wouldn't have even been contemplated to do it online. <clears throat> no, no, no. Sure. Um, so the growth. So, what are your thoughts on that, Bob? I think if you're going to advocate that, in my opinion, it come the uh, it needs to come with a health warning. Yeah. Because the person needs to be very experienced. The person, the therapist. Yeah, yeah. Needs to have probably had, and had in this case in this article, two or three years face to face work with the person, and the group. Yeah. So. They had an attachment and a uh, close proximity at a physical level before COVID. Yeah. Before, uh, online, if you like. Um, so those two prerequisites, that there was a relationship built up and the person was very experienced, meant that she was able, though, you know, it takes quite a lot of expertise to... Uh, holder or the group was able to hold the client who did the regression work, if you like, um, enough to be able to help her um, come back to adult ego states in a robust way. Yeah. Now, in the description of the vignette that, she, that happened, um, you could see it needed somebody very experienced. And that was my biggest thought. I, as long as people reading that article realised that and they didn't suddenly just go out and do... Absolutely, yeah. And to have a relationship, like, like you said... Online, with... yeah. okay. Because I think if they've had those types of relationships and they're very, very experienced, I think there's a possibility there. Yeah. A lot, but I, as I said before, I think there needs to be a health warning. Yeah, I ran pre-COVID, through COVID, and I still do it now, um, a, a <clears throat> membership. I have a group of ladies that come to me, but it's not a group therapy. It's support based on therapeutic principles, or that's what I have on my website. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and I'm assuming then the way you've said that, is that the work in the group online was very much in the here and now. Yes, yeah. They bring, If they've got issues, they bring the issues. I put some information together or whatever, and we have a conversation, but it's support. Yeah. Based it's on very therapy. much around being in the here and now. Yeah. Well, and it's not about, you know, induced or spontaneous regression, is it? No, no. And it's also about 
you know, congratulating the wins and, and talking about things that they've been through in the week and feeding back and working together as a group. There's a lot of, it's really supportive, mm. but it's not therapy. No. Since COVID, um, as I've said, I think twice now, I have been surprised um, that in the world of psychotherapy, that rise, though not so high, obviously, has still been maintained. Yeah. That surprised me. Um, having said all that, Lot, um, in some ways, like this person who came in today, she was talking about, here's another thing that uh, she'd like face to face. However, she lived quite a long way away. And sometimes a car might break down or she was ill or she had to be at home or whatever it is. Could she still have the sessions on Zoom in that transitionary phase of for the, you know, that week or two weeks? So, you know, you might get a mixture of both. Yeah, yeah. You know, and before COVID, none of these options were around. No. No, well, I suppose they were around, but I don't think we used them. Well, I certainly didn't. Oh, they were around, but they weren't yeah. used, were they? Yeah. Hmm. I also think if you are going to, and I, I was very pleasantly surprised. No, I wasn't surprised, Jack. That's wrong. I was pleasantly pleased. I don't know what I felt, but I thought, oh, that's really good. When you said that you did some training on on this, and that's the bit. You see, I think if you're going to do psychotherapy counseling on online device, say like Zoom or Teams. I think it was very professional to have some training. Yeah. So in our psychotherapy training four year course, we provide online training, especially in this area, for people in the placement uh, sector who might have to, yeah. or at least give that option temporarily to do therapy online. So we provide training in that area. Yeah, because it is completely different. You know, I used to send um, an email out like, with how to connect up to Zoom and, you know, with basic step-by-step -step for them and, and how it will look and, do you know what I mean? Because for some people, they, they're not, you know, computer literate. They don't know how to do it. They don't know how to turn the camera and the microphone on and, you know, 20 minutes of a session could be gone just by trying to set up the Zoom call in the first place. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, they're technophobic of many people. Well, so, I was to a certain extent. Wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And then the absolutely. expense that I put into it, I like I don't just use my computer camera. I've got a, a separate camera and I've got a separate microphone that I use. Do you know what I mean? So I I invested in what I was doing during COVID. Mm, mm, mm. And in some ways, there was no other alternative. For your, nope. for your career and for you to keep in touch with the work that you've been doing with your clients and that duty of care we're talking about. So the question is, has it changed psychotherapy COVID? And the answer is definitely yes, in terms of uh, different options for clients to access. Yeah. And the question, which I sort of breached a bit, which is, um, do even though therapists might use Zoom, has their style changed on Zoom? In other words, Zoom, I think, is very lent to CBT psychotherapy. Yes. Which is very yeah. much about problem solving and about problem focused work and and also solution focused work, of course. Is it um so prevalent with say relational psychotherapy methodology, which is often an about um, encourage people into the in TA words to the child ego state or younger self where often the uh, healing is um, would is that is Zoom which is what this article was about in a way is it so so uh, user friendly for that style yeah and I think in the end of their day um it's yes and no. One of them, big questions for me is around protection. Yes. Yeah. 
And if you're going to invite somebody in the child eager state and you haven't had that relationship first and the face to face level, perhaps know, know them, et cetera, et cetera, then I, I would modify my style. Yes. Yeah, I think I, I agree, and I probably did do. I think the ones that worked best for me were the ones that were clients pre-COVID. Mm, yes, because you got switched right. over, do you know what I mean? Because we had that relationship, we had that trust. Mm. I kind of knew the signs of, you know, a transition that was occurring because I'd witnessed it live, if you know what I mean. So I kind of knew what we were doing, whereas when somebody came on zoom straight off and it was the first time we met i don't feel it was as successful yeah so i think we have to modify our style i was in uh, slovenia not long ago and we were talking about online therapy and i'm sure if they were here talking this podcast they'd say yes covid definitely changed and gave changed psychotherapy world and gave the psychotherapy world more options Yes, yeah, freedom of choice, definitely, yeah. And and that was would be very useful in terms of accessibility. I'm saying that about Slovenia particularly because there are many therapists in many different areas and the uh, accessibility to therapists is very different from in the United Kingdom when you have a lot of psychotherapists. So yeah. you can probably find a psychotherapist within 10 miles or something. Absolutely, a, yeah. Mean, Add that to 50. Yes. So it's it's a different story. It provides more freedom of options, uh, even though the, you might have to modify your style as a psychotherapist online. Um, and, it, and maybe that would always have happened, but COVID quickened up the process for psychotherapy. Yeah. In, in the world, really. Yeah. And it allows for you to, to be more flexible in your approach and... Do you know what I mean? I was getting towards the end when I was doing the Zooms that if there was a diagram that I was talking about, if we were talking about the parent, adult and child, you can put up a whiteboard and you can draw it out for them. You know, but I've always got my flip chart here, so I'm always doing diagrams, but you could still do that online via a Zoom. It was just you needed to, you know, again, do a bit of training or learn how to actually do it. Yeah, I mean... Before COVID, uh, I'd ever only used Zoom for one therapy session yeah. online. <laughs> After COVID, um, I still didn't really do therapy online. I retired anyway. So, uh, but would I, if I'd have been a lot younger, would I have continued? I think the options would have been there, but I think I would have had to modify my style yes. uh, for more affection, effectiveness, but more for protection. I think one of the things that overall COVID was the change in the the reasons that people were looking for therapy. I I was seeing an awful lot of people with health anxiety that I'd never really come across before. Do you know what I mean? That was one of the main things, I think, that people were going through. And grief and loss, obviously. Mm. And a lot of fear around for that two and a half years. Yeah. And after COVID, where there's still long COVID and there's still health anxiety yep. that come from that period of time, uh, many therapists have stayed online. Yes. Yeah. Chosen not to go back to do face-to-face. -face. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? I think, again, I'm repeating myself, but the style of therapist you are might lend itself more to online, you know. Yeah. Uh, Solution-focused psychotherapy. Yes, well. yeah. Um, whereas the more relational, aggressive types of psychotherapy, I think is a different story. Yeah, I do prefer face-to-face. -face. I do prefer being in a room with the person that I'm seeing, I must admit, yeah. Yeah, I do a lot of supervision of psychotherapy, yeah? And whereas with the psychotherapy model that I use, which is very regressive, very much working with a child eager state, 
which I think is challenging online, mainly because of protection um, issues, really, though, and maybe relational in terms of close proximity. In terms of supervision, which is an adult to adult discipline, you have a, you have a different story. Yeah. So I think people have definitely stayed online as supervisors. Uh, say COVID had meant they went online because of COVID. Yes, it's, yeah. Many more, I think, have stayed online. Many, many more than, say, psychotherapists. So do yeah. you do online supervision still now? I do. Because I suppose you work with people from different countries, so it's a necessity. I do a lot of online supervision. Yeah. And a lot of work in different countries. Yeah, so you're right, many different countries. And um, and I do think that um, there's a lot of advantages of supervision in terms of accessibility, in terms of the way supervision is as a discipline. That has meant that people have stayed online yeah it's very different because it's adult to adult focused it's not it's not uh relational work going into the younger self so going back to the title bob which was has covid changed the face of psychotherapy do you think yeah. it has or do you think we've kind of gone back more now to how it was before covid well i mean there's another bit didn't you didn't ask what well, so i'm gonna ask has COVID changed the world of psychotherapy positively or negatively very good question uh, that's the bit that's i'd like to also address i think it's both me too I, yeah what, i was going to say that <laughs> more positively in terms of freedom of choice yeah options pathways accessibility yeah all those things uh and i think Drawbacks for therapists that work aggressively, relationally, and with the child eager state, it's not so straightforward online, even if you did it. Yeah. I couldn't wait to go back face to face. It, it, yeah, as soon as as soon as I was able to, I went back face to face. And I haven't said that. There's, there are a couple of my clients that were face to face, but as I see online now, and you, do you know what I mean? They they didn't want to come back face to face, and it's working because I'd I'd already built up that relationship with them. So I think in terms of widening the field, options, autonomy, accessibility, they're all positives. Yeah. Um, but what did you say? So I said yes or no. So I sort of answered that. And you were saying something before that about, oh, has it changed? Has it know, changed it permanently or did it just change it for the, the time <clears throat> that, you know, we were in COVID? I don't think it would have happened anyway, Jackie. Okay. With the with the advent of artist, um, Google, uh, Siri, uh, now artificial intelligence or A1, if you like, and uh, I think that would have happened. I think COVID has really speeded up dramatically the upward curve towards online therapy yeah it happened overnight really didn't it and you know yeah. it, even worse for me and i can't even contemplate ever doing it is therapy over the telephone there we are yeah so the advent it really accelerated by maybe 10 years yeah do you think it would have come though with that with the advent of artificial intelligence and holograms and um, things like that, but it speeded it up dramatically. Yeah, and I, I, there are good points to it, but I, I still think there's some not so good points. Yeah, well, I've said the few I've talked yeah, about. Yeah. Um, I also think that for people who are highly withdrawn, people who... Um, cut off parts of the self uh, uh, you know you're still doing therapy in their bedroom probably yeah you know people have social phobias yeah the positive side of that is they can stay in the house the negative side is they never have the payable steps to get out of the house so as i said 
with some treatments and methods, I think um, online, being online devices like Zoom actually may compound the problem. Yeah. People never we're, get We're it. meant to connect with other human beings, and I don't think you yeah. can do that through a screen. That, you know, that human different type connection. Of connection. It's a completely yeah. different type of connection. Yeah. Um, I completely agree with you. And I was watching a program about adolescence and youth uh, where people were talking about, well, you know, there's different types of um, adolescence. And one of them is that, you know, people spend their life, the te these adolescents, on social media, in their bedrooms and never come out. Yeah. And, and psychotherapy... On Zoom, in one way fits into that frame of reference, but also I think compounds the problem. Yeah, me too. I'm a great believer in connection, and I think it's a different type of connection. The way we are talking now, for example. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So I can't offer you a cup of tea and shake oh. your hand, and there's no physical cality and all these things, which I think are part of the relational matrix which is really really important mm. yeah good question so, i'm i'm in two minds bob whether it has or whether it hasn't it's definitely changed i think covid negatively positively certainly i think we're both in agreement aren't we that it's, it's changed. changed yeah the face <laughs> of psychotherapy i think the bigger debate is more whether is it's positive or negative that's when I think we have lots of conversations about positive roots and perhaps drawbacks. Yeah. It all seems such a distant memory now, though, Bob. Oh, I remember too. I remember I just come out of hospital. I just had my triple bypass, the heart surgery. And I uh, came, I was the last person in Withenshaw Hospital to be the actually last on the 26th of February to have this, to have the operation. I'm be more, I pray to God in a, 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 a gratitude because I, I would never have had that operation for my, two years, but I'm um, anyway, and they let me out <clears throat> into the high intensity world after the operation, then into the nurse world, the heart surgery. And they got me out of hospital really quickly. I mean, usually you have to stay in four, five, six, seven days, eight days after the heart surgery because the first COVID case had come to Withenshaw Hospital. Wow. 3rd of March. And I went um, home. And then on the 24th of March, because I was recovering, I had six months off. And I, I always remember because I was in bed because recovering. And on the 24th, 12th of March, was it? Leading up to the 24th yes, of March. Yeah. Boris, the UK Prime Minister at that time, instructing us to stay at home. All that time, and I think it's because I had the heart operation as well, so it's very much in my memory. Um, I remember a bit like, unlike you, like yesterday. I remember it, but it's it's like a distant macamer. I think I felt more the impact when we were coming out of it and we were allowed to socialise again. I can oh. remember I went down to London to the Houses of Parliament. I was going on a trip with some other ladies and we went to watch a show, Mamma Mia, in oh, London. Yeah. And we were in a theatre packed full of people. Yeah. And it was like, it was only... A matter of months ago, we were isolated and not allowed to be with anybody, and yet now we've reverted right back to where we were. And in the world of psychotherapy, which is, I know with this podcast, I'll go back over this again, um, many people did stay online. Yeah. So I think connection is really important, so I've always liked face-to-face, -face, but I can see a lot of the... But certainly COVID changed the face of the psychotherapy. It did. It did. And at warp speed, like you said, it probably would have come anyway, but it was overnight. It was within weeks. We needed to change the way we were delivering therapy, yeah. Great podcast. 
Yes, absolutely. So what we're talking about next time is discovering clients' generational scripts in therapy. Oh, this is up your street and my street. I like this. I do. So until next time, Bob, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.